Okay guys, we're looking at the steel making process here now. Uh, we had looked at the blast furnace where you throw in iron ore, coke and limestone and you get out a thing called pig iron. Now we had looked at that the last day. <coughs> and pig iron has about 4 or 5% carbon and it's not much good for anything. So you've got to reduce the amount of carbon in it um, down to about, let's say, 1% for a round figure. So we've got to get rid of the carbon um, to make it into steel. So you, you've got two choices. You've got a basic oxygen furnace or an electric arc furnace. So there are your two options, really for making steel from pig iron. So it's very important to know that, <coughs> sorry guys, that to make steel, step one is throw the iron ore into a blast furnace with the coke and the limestone. And the coke uh, is like coal. It makes it very hot and melts everything. and. You can separate the iron from the dirt and the rocks and the stones and everything. But when that iron comes out then, it's got about 5% carbon because of the coal, which is known as coke. And to get rid of that 5% carbon then, uh, down to 1%, we have two choices. And you need to know all three of these furnaces. So today we're going to just draw and learn about the basic oxygen furnace. Now, it's straightforward enough. Um, often they throw a bit of scrap into the furnace with this. So there are six steps that really, you throw a bit of scrap into the furnace there and pour in the melted pig iron. So it would make sense to have this, you'd have this furnace right beside the blast furnace so that when the pig iron comes out melted, you would immediately, you know, get it in here then so that you don't have to be reheating it. So you throw in your molten pig iron, you blow oxygen down on top of it, and the oxygen makes the fire even hotter, and it burns off the carbon as smoke. We'll be looking at that in a minute. So maybe after, whatever, half an hour or whatever there, you'd sample it to see... Now starting off you'd have 4 or 5% carbon, maybe after half an hour you'd have it down to maybe 1% and you test it, then you'd pour the steel, because it's now called steel instead of pig iron, because you've got rid of the carbon in it from 5% down to 1, so now steel is really strong and flexible and, <coughs> and useful. And the final stage then is you just empty out any of the rubbish that's left in the bottom of the furnace and you'd start the whole thing over again. So there are six steps to it. So the first thing we're going to do there is we'll just learn how to, to draw this and write out the steps. And I'll be talking a bit more as we go along. So we're going looking at <clears throat> the basic oxygen furnace so I'm going to just maybe come down um, a third of the page and we'll just lightly draw you can use a ruler if you want for this two lines about that far apart we're going to put just a nice gentle curve on the bottom of this and what I'm going to do then is just put a 45 degree slope in a 45 degree slope in and just coming over across a little bit so that's the start of our furnace and I'm just going to come down here a tiny bit and I'm going to go light on this now, just on this bit. Go light up here on the first bit, and we can go heavy then on all the rest. 
So here's the follow the curve there roughly. Okay, so that's the body of our furnace. And I'm going to color that in there just so that we can. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot one thing. Here, here is our tapping spout. So I'm going to just put this on here as our tapping spout. And that's why I was saying to go light there on that section. And we'll just cover or color this in here now. So that's our the thickness of this furnace. Okay, so there's the thickness of our furnace. And the tapping spot here now, I should just get rid of. I'll just leave it like that, it'll be okay. Now the next thing we want to put on here then is what's called the oxygen lens, which is just like a, a pipe that goes down into it. So there's our oxygen lens. Just put that going right up here. And I want to put a fume collector here then that just gathers the smoke. So we just start that off there like a top hat. And just put a curve on it there over and away. So that'll do. So we label this now. Next. So this is our uh, furnace. This is our fume hood. To collect the smoke. Uh, this is our oxygen lens. Now I'm going to put it underneath this water coolant. Okay, because what actually happens here is that this, this is taken off, that there's actually um, sort of a pipe within a pipe. And on the, in between the two pipes, there's water can flow around there. Because otherwise, if you didn't have water flowing around inside in this pipe, it would melt inside in the furnace. So there's basically a pipe within a pipe. Maybe to just show that there, I might just put um, just a smaller pipe going into the bigger pipe. And for those of you that do graphics, You'll know that I'm doing hidden detail here. Um, it's not a big deal if you don't do this. But. So there's a pipe within a pipe. So that's our oxygen lens. And the last thing I'm going to put in here. Is some rollers. So you can just draw some circles. Up against the bottom of this. And they're rollers so that when you're tilting the furnace to fill it or empty it, that it can roll along them to make life easier. And the next thing we're going to know is we're going to use some red for our molten. And I'm going to put in lots of C's in here for carbon in red. So this is this would be red hot and there's loads of carbon inside in it. Now what happens then is... When you blow the oxygen, I'm going to put the oxygen in blue. So when you blow the oxygen down through the pipe here onto this, what happens is the oxygen atoms grab the carbon atoms So oxygen atoms grab carbon atoms it's like going to a disco where the the, the, the reds are, are the let's say the males or the females so one grabs the other there and brings them off out for a bag of chips whatever so see so 
So now CO is carbon monoxide, which is smoke. So C O equals carbon monoxide, which is known as smoke. Okay, and the more smoke that you take off it, the more carbon you're taking out. And even though it started with 5%, what you're really trying to do is get it down to about 1% and then it's called steel. Okay, so that's the furnace drawn and labelled. Now I might just zoom back here a little bit. Okay, so you can just see a tiny bit more. Okay, so uh, just the overview there is um, after uh, coming out of the blast furnace, pig urn has let's say five percent it's not exact but five percent carbon this makes it hard or very i'll just say very brittle okay which means it breaks easily so it's very i should have said maybe hard and brittle so this makes it very brittle and uh, pretty useless. Okay, so if the carbon is burned off, or reduced to 1%, now it's sometimes one and a half, sometimes it's a half a percent, but look, roughly one. Uh, then it is called steel and is strong and tough and hard. Um, so it's an excellent metal. Okay, <coughs> so there are six steps six steps in the process okay so step one two three four five and six okay so there are six steps so step one is throw in some scrap step two pour in the molten, which is melted, pig iron. Now, and I'll just remind you there now, 5% carbon. So that is the problem, okay? That when you throw in the molten pig iron here, it's got 5% carbon. So then step three is blow on the oxygen now this does two really important things okay it, it uh, rises the temperature and r removes i'll say reduces the carbon now again don't forget now we said this earlier on the oxygen atoms grab a carbon atom and go off together, linked together as molecules of smoke, which is carbon monoxide. Okay, because that's what smoke is, carbon atom and uh, oxygen atom. Mono means one, so it's one carbon, one oxygen uh, molecule, and they go off as smoke. So you blow in that, then step four is with sample it sample the 
amount of carbon. Okay, which is so that that's dropping all the time. Eventually, like you know, it'll go to zero if you kept doing it, um, and you're left with what's called pure iron. But that's not actually an advantage because pure iron is pretty soft. So you want to leave about one percent, or you know, as a small bit of carbon, so that it's steel. Now, step five then is when you're happy, um, so you pour the steel when uh, when the carbon is uh, I'll just say the symbol for about one percent because if you wanted a high carbon steel that might be 1.2 1.5 if you wanted low carbon steel it might be only around 0 0.1 of a percent so <coughs> that varies and finally then six is clean out the furnace. So you clean out the furnace to start again. No, the important thing to know right is this um, changes pig iron into steel no it's a strange thing really like you know it shouldn't be called pig iron in a way it should be called pig steel you know because um the only difference is a few percentage of of carbon really like uh, i know there's 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 a little bit more technical in terms of silicon and uh, manganese and there's other elements in it but you know the most important one is the carbon and the <coughs> the pig iron going from five percent down to roughly one percent and that's so it goes then it goes from being called iron to steel and that confuses a lot of people but it shouldn't so um that is the basic oxygen furnace or the basic oxygen process of turning pig iron into steel and in the next class we will look at using the electric arc furnace to do that so see you all later guys Sloan